So we have the fraction 1 8th, and you might be asking, how can we convert this fraction into a decimal? And when we do convert it, how do we know if we will have a terminating decimal or a repeating decimal? The answers to these questions and more are coming your way. So first, it's important for us to learn some vocabulary. The first vocabulary term is terminating decimal. And a terminating decimal is when the numbers after the decimal point terminate or come to an end. For instance, the fraction 1 fourth can be converted to the decimal 0 0.25. Notice how the numbers stop or terminate after the 5. I do want to mention, though, that in this decimal, 0 0.25, there actually are numbers after the 5. Those numbers are going to be zeros. But if you have repeating zeros, that is not classified as a repeating decimal. A repeating decimal is when the numbers after the decimal point repeat in a pattern forever. For instance, if we convert the fraction 1 third into a decimal, that will give us 0 0.333333, and it will keep going on and on forever. So instead of writing infinite threes, what we can do is put a bar above one of the threes. So now the answer to that first question. How do we convert a fraction to a decimal? And we have the fraction 1 8. It's important for us to recognize that the fraction bar in the middle means division. So what we are really doing is 1 divided by 8. When we set that up, the denominator or the divisor is on the outside of the division symbol and the numerator, or the dividend, is on the inside of the division symbol. Now we can divide. So we'll start off asking ourselves, how many times does 8 go into 1? Well, it can't. So we're going to write a 0 and a decimal point. And the reason why we write that decimal point is because that number 1 can also be represented as the decimal 1.0000 on and on forever. Moving forward, we're going to keep one of those zeros. Now we want to ask ourselves, how many times does 8 go into 10? 8 goes into 10 one time, and 8 times 1 is 8. 10 minus 8 is equal to 2. Next, we ask ourselves, how many times does 8 go into 2? Well, it doesn't, so we have to bring down another one of those zeros. Now, how many times does 8 go into 20? 8 goes into 20 two times, and 8 times 2 is equal to 16. 20 minus 16 is equal to 4. How many times does 8 go into 4? Well, it doesn't. So what do we have to do? If you were thinking bring down another 0, you're exactly correct. Now we ask ourselves, how many times does 8 go into 40? 8 goes into 40 exactly 5 times. And 8 times 5 is equal to 40, and 40 minus 40 is equal to 0, which lets us know that 1 eighth as a decimal will be 0 0.125. Example number 2, 4 ninths. So you can notice we set up the numbers with the division symbol. First, we want to ask ourselves how many times does 9 go into 4? Well, 9 doesn't go into 4. So this is when we write the zero and the decimal point. The reason why is because that four as a decimal would be 4.000. So we'll keep one of the zeros and move forward. How many times does nine go into 40? Nine goes into 40 four times, and nine times four is 36. 40 minus 36 is equal to four. Now we want to determine how many times does 9 go into 4? Well, 9 doesn't go into the 4, so we bring down a 0. How many times does 9 go into 40? 9 goes into 40 4 times, and 9 times 4 is 36. 40 minus 36 is equal to 4. And I hope you're starting to notice a pattern. And I'm hoping you're recognizing the same pattern over and over and over. And it will continue this pattern infinitely. 
which lets us know that our answer will be 0 0.44444, or we can make this easier as 0 0.4 with the bar above it. So you might be thinking, this is a lot of work, and I'm a middle school student, so I don't want to do work. Well, you're in luck, because I have a couple tricks that I'm going to teach you that's going to save you some time. The first one is the denominator of three. So you notice we have one third, two thirds, three thirds, four thirds, and five thirds. Let's see what these are equal to as decimals. So what can we take from this information? That any fraction with a denominator of three and a numerator that is not a multiple of three will be a repeating decimal. This also works when we have a denominator of nine. So we can know then that any fraction with a denominator of nine and a numerator that is not a multiple of nine will also be a repeating decimal. So now I have a practice problem I want you to try. I want you to determine which fraction below does not represent a repeating decimal. I would recommend you pause the video now, solve, and then resume when you're ready to see if your solution is correct. Let's see if you are correct. 5 ninths is equal to 0 0.5 repeating. 1 sixth is equal to 0 0.16 repeating. 2 thirds is equal to 0 0.6 repeating. And 1 fifth, which is the answer, is equal to 0 0.2, which is the only terminating decimal out of all those fractions. If you had any of these incorrect, I would recommend you pause, go back, and try to find your mistake. Thank you for watching.